In our last couple lesson, we've talked about properties or characteristics of matter, and we've given lots of examples of physical properties and chemical properties. Today, though, we're going to be looking at what happens when we have changes in these properties or changes in matter. Now, something that's very, very important to understand that we talked about way back in the first lesson when we talked about what matter is, is what's called the law of conservation of matter and energy. And this scientific law says that matter and energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. We can't make new matter from nothing. We can't completely destroy matter and make it not exist anymore. But we can change matter, and matter can be changed in a variety of ways. Sometimes when matter's changed, it may just change a little bit in its appearance, but it remains the same substance. But then other times when matter's changed, it can form completely new substances. Now, just like we had two different types of properties to describe matter, there are two different types of changes that matter can undergo. And these are called physical changes and chemical changes. Now, if you remember, we talked about physical properties as being a property or a characteristic that you could observe and measure without changing the chemical makeup of a substance. And physical changes go right along with physical properties because a physical change is basically just a change in the physical properties of an object. A physical change happens without any kind of chemical reaction, without a new substance being formed. And after a physical change, even though a substance may look different, it's still the same original substance that we started out with. A really simple but good example of this is a piece of paper. If I take this piece of paper and ball it up into a ball, it looks different than it did before, but it's still a piece of paper. It hasn't chemically been altered. It's undergone a physical change. It's undergone a change of its shape. I can take the paper and tear it into smaller pieces. Now I have several pieces of paper, but I still have paper. I haven't created a new substance. I've just changed the appearance of the paper. That's what it means to have a physical change. We're going to quickly go through a few slides that have several different examples of physical changes, changes in the physical properties of matter, things like crushing a can or melting ice cubes. Again, that's a change of shape, a change of state. We still have our original substance there. Boiling water also is an example of a physical change. Even though it looks almost like we're making a new substance because we have steam coming off the water, that steam is just water vapor. It's water in a gaseous form. So chemically it hasn't changed, it's only changed its state. Mixing sand and mixing water, even though it might mix in and, you know, some things we can even dissolve in water, but in this example you still have your sand, you still have your water, and you could separate them back out. Breaking a glass or shredding paper, in these examples we're taking something and tearing it or breaking it into smaller pieces, but again you still have pieces of glass and you still have pieces of paper, so these are still examples of physical changes. Our last two examples here are chopping wood, which again is breaking something into smaller pieces, and then mixing different colored marbles. Um, even though now they're mixed together, and it's the same way with a lot of chemicals. When we mix certain chemicals, they don't react with each other. They may mix in together just like the red and the green marbles, but we've still got red marbles, we've still got green marbles. If we mix, for instance, salt and sugar, those are two different chemicals that, that look similar, but when we mix them in, we could still, you know, tell this is a grain of salt, this is a grain of sugar if we tasted it or, you know, examined it closely. Now the other type of changes are chemical changes. And these are the changes that do form a new chemical substance, that do cause a chemical reaction or do require a chemical reaction to happen. And we'll be looking at several different examples of chemical changes here in our next few labs and activities that we do. When we talk about a chemical change or a chemical reaction, we're actually talking about the bonds of the molecules being broken and being recombined to make new substances, new chemically unique substances that we did not have at the beginning of our chemical reaction. We can go back to our example of our paper that we started out with looking at physical changes. We said we could tear the paper, we could fold the paper, we could crumple the paper. No matter what we do physically to it, it's still a piece of paper. But if we were to take a lighter or take a match and burn this piece of paper, then we would make something new. We would have smoke, which contains carbon, carbon monoxide, things that are coming from the burning of the paper, from that chemical reaction of burning. We would have ashes left behind from the paper. 
but we would not have our original paper left anymore. We would have created, through burning, new substances, chemically different materials. Some examples of some chemical reactions or some chemical changes that can occur are things like rusting of iron. That's an example of oxidation. We'll do some activities to look at that here over the next few days. Burning wood, burning coal, burning paper, um, anything that's burning, that's a type of chemical change, a type of chemical reaction. Baking a cake's an example of a chemical change that doesn't you know, happen with a bang or a boom, but as the cake's baking in the oven, the materials that go into it, the eggs, the flour, the sugar, all of the other ingredients are being chemically altered and combined differently to make that finished product, that cake that comes out of the oven. We can't take our cake and get the egg back out of it, get the flour back out of it because it's been chemically changed. Fireworks exploding, when you go to a fireworks show, that's another great example of a chemical reaction that is happening just very explosively and very quickly. And we'll be looking, a little bit later in the year, we'll be looking at how fireworks work to make the different colors that we see. We've got a neat little activity we'll do with that a little bit later. Baking soda and vinegar is a type of chemical change that we see in science class a lot. Um, sometimes we do it, we see it, but we don't really necessarily understand what's going on. But as that reaction is foaming and releasing gas, it's actually forming new substances. It's uh, taking the vinegar, it's taking the baking soda, and it's making sodium acetate, and it's making carbon dioxide gas that's being released. So we put two chemicals in, but we get different chemicals out of that reaction. We've got the picture here of the rotting bananas, but any kind of fruit or food or vegetable or anything rotting, that's a type of decomposition where the original material is being broken down into other, other materials, other compounds. So that's an example of a chemical reaction that happens a little more slowly over time. So these are just a few examples of the types of physical and chemical changes that substance can undergo. And there's thousands of different types of changes that we could look at. Obviously, we don't have time to look at every example. But the important thing to take away from this lesson is when you see a change in a substance, can you identify whether it's a physical change or a chemical change? If we still have the original substance after the change, it's a physical change. If it's been chemically altered to form a new substance, then you know that a chemical change has occurred.